In the last presentation, we saw what is a pattern or sequence detector. We did one example and I solved that example by following these steps. And I hope you remember that steps now because we are going to solve one more example on the same topic. And uh, after this example, I will end the sequence detector here. If you have any doubt regarding the sequence detector, you can ask in the comment section. So let's move to the example that I have taken. Design a sequence detector to detect three or more consecutive ones. This is the question three or more consecutive ones in a string of bits coming through an input line. So you already know a sequence detector is having an input by which we give the bit stream and uh, that bit stream is analyzed by the sequence detector and it will detect a particular pattern out of it and if the pattern is detected the output will go high and definitely there is a clock in the sequence detector depending upon which the detector works. So the sequence that we have to detect is three or more consecutive ones. So let's say if the input bit stream is x and it is a zero 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 and so on let's say one more zero is here and so on then what will be the output of the sequence detector let's say output is y it will first detect zero and definitely we don't require zero so output is zero then again it will detect zero making output zero then one and one is definitely our first bit that we want but uh, we have not detected the whole pattern so output will remain zero similarly the another one we are in the queue we want one more one so output is still zero because we haven't got our third one and now we have three ones and we want three or more consecutive ones so i'm having three one here making my output one but then again i'm having bit as zero so output will become zero similarly it will detect all these three bits and till this two bit the output will remain zero and when the third bit is detected the output will go high now the important point comes when i will explain you the overlapping and the non-overlapping if i consider the overlapping then this one will give me three ones three consecutive ones making output high here and then zero is there so output will be low this is when i have considered the overlapping what if i say there is no overlapping involved then my output will look something like zero 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 one then zero 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 one this one as the output will only for the overlapping case if i have a non-overlapping case it will become zero because it will not consider any ones that we have already checked it will start freshly from this one so the output will be zero in this way it is when i'm having a non overlapping so i hope you got the difference between the overlapping and non-overlapping now the next step is to find the state diagram and let's say s0 is my first state and it is actually the reset state when you switch on the sequence detector you are on s0 so s0 is the reset one and then s1 s1 is one and uh, let me make something clear here it has and it awaits when I'm on S0, it has nothing. It has a reset state. And it awaits the consecutive ones, the three consecutive ones, and uh, more ones. And when I'm on S1, it is having one. So it is having one, and it awaits one, one. At least two ones to get the output high. It can be more than two, one, definitely. And uh, if I'm on S2, So it has two ones and it awaits a single one to get the output high. Similarly, the last state is S3 when it is having the three ones. So it has three ones. It awaits more ones or you can also have zero because we have our output high. So these are the states and now we have to make the state diagram. So I will first make S0 as my first state and when we are on s0 and if the input bit stream is zero the first bit of the input bit stream is zero then it will remain on s0 with the output equal to zero and when the input bit stream is having the input as one it will go to it will go to s1 because s1 is one so i will make s1 here 
this is s1 now we are on s1 and uh, we have two possibilities either the input is 0 or it is 1 if the input is 0 it again goes back to s0 with the output equal to 0 now if the input is 1 it will go to the next state and the next state is s2 s2 with the input equal to 1 and output equal to 0 so you can see how it is working I need triple ones for now you just consider triple one when I have triple one I have the output as one more than triple one is good but now you just see for the triple one I have one I go to the next state then I again have my second one I go to the next state and in the same way if I have the other one I will go to the state 3s3 and the output will also become 1 because I have three ones now 1 1 and 1 you can see when I have three ones 1 1 and 1 my output is 1 so this is how the state table is being drawn and if I'm on s2 I'm on 1 1 s2 and the input is 0 so again it will go to s0 with the output equal to 0 now we will talk about s3 when we are on s3 let's see what are the possibilities if the input is 0 definitely it will go to s0 with the output equal to 0 and if the input is 1 so what we actually get we get 1 1 1 and then again 1 so definitely I will be on s3 and the output will be 1 because in our question it says or more consecutive ones so definitely our output is 1 and if I have another one then again it will be on S3 and output will be 1 until we have 0 it will remain on S3 so this is a complete state diagram and the next step is to get our circuit for that we have to do the state assignment we will do state assignment we will assign the binary codes to the states very simple let's say s0 is 0 0 s1 is 0 1 s2 is 1 0 and then s3 is 1 1 this is our state assignment and now we will make the state table for this so let's make the state table the first column will be having the present states and let's say the present state is given by QA and QB then we will have the input that is X and uh, then we have the next state QA plus QB plus and finally the output Y so let's try to find out this state table using uh, the state diagram that we have just developed 0 0 0 0 0 1 let's see for this two cases first and I will copy this state diagram and I will paste it near to my state table so that we don't have to scroll the board again and again I will copy and then paste I will drag it down to my state table now it is more convenient to solve it so let's see the first two cases when the state is 0 0 it means we are on s0 I have already done the state assignment and if the input is 0 it means I am going to be on s0 so the next state is definitely going to be 0 0 with the output is equal to 0 you can see output is 0 this is y and this is x now we will see for this case when we are on s0 and input is 1 when we are on s0 and input is 1 I will go to s1 and s1 is 0 1 with the output equal to 0 again so this is how we have to complete our state table I will do it quickly so that we can move to our implementation part 0 1 0 0 1 1 we are on s1 and if I have input as 0 I'm going to be on 0 0 that is my s 0 now when input is 1 you can see input is 1 I will go to s2 and s2 is 1 0 with the output equal to 0 and when I'm on s2 
and if input is 0 I will again direct it to S0 so 0 0 with output equal to 0 and if the input is 1 we will go to S3 so 1 1 and with the output equal to 1 now final two cases when we are on S3 and let's see when the input is 0 what we have when input is 0 I will go to S0 so 0 0 with the output equal to 0 and uh, when the input is 1 I will remain on S3 with the output equal to 1 so this is our complete state table now we will use this state table for the implementation and uh, let's say we want to implement this sequential circuit by using the D flip flop now you already know the next state of the D flip flop is equal to the data input so I can say DA the input data line for the A flip flop is equal to QA plus its next state and DB in the same way is equal to QB plus so the next step is to find out the minimized expression for DA and DB and how we will do that we will use the K map for that purpose so let's make the K map to get DA DB and definitely the output Y uh, 8 cell K map is required for this purpose because there are three variables QA QB and X this is QA QB X and uh, let me write these things down 0 1 now I will copy this K map and I will paste it three times so that we can use it for DB also and also for the output Y so I will copy it and then paste I will paste it here and again I will paste it here so let's start filling this map let's first do it for DA so we will fill it according to the QA plus whatever be the value we have got here we will fill it 0 0 0 1 so 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 if you want to write these zeros you can write if you don't want then please don't do it it's just making your map messy now we will do the pairing this is my first pair this is my second pair so D A or Q A plus is equal to Q B and X or this pair will give me Q A X so simply I can write it Q A or Q B and X in the same way we will find the minimized function for D B or QB plus so let's fill it 0 1 0 0 so 0 1 0 0 and then finally we have 0 1 0 1 so 0 1 0 1 a very simple K map to solve this is my first pair and this is my second pair so Q B plus or DA is equal to QB complement or QA and X now we will fill the K map for Y that is our output I will fill it directly 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 0 this is the single pair that I can get so Y is equal to Q A X now we have got the value of DB this is DB not DA and we have got the value of DA Similarly, we got the value for Y. Now we can easily implement it by using the flip flop. So let's do it. I will make two flip flops. The first one is my A flip flop having the input as DA and output as QA. This is A flip flop. And I will make another flip flop here. This is the B flip flop having the input as DB and output as QB. So let's make this inputs and outputs this is DA this is QA DB QB a clock is there let's say it is negative S triggered okay and uh, we have to now implement this functions that we have got let's first implement DA DA is equal to QA or QB and X so I will take QA like this and QB like this I will give them to a OR gate like this and then I will use a AND gate here 
the input is x and the output of this gate will go to da so in this way i have my da similarly i can implement db db is equal to qb complement or qa and x you can do it by yourself you can implement db and the output is equal to qa and x so i can take qa from here and x from here i will give them to a two input and gate and i will have the output like this so this is all you have to do in the sequence or pattern detector this is the whole process to implement the circuit by getting the sequence or pattern that you need to detect if you have any doubt regarding this you can ask in the comment section i'm going to finish it here you can implement db by yourself so see you in the next presentation